So this is part two of the elastic collisions um, example, um, which involves two carts that have magnetic bumpers. Um, I had to break this into two parts because I simply couldn't uh, finish working it in the 15 minutes that YouTube allots. So um, I'm going to pick off basically where part one left off. Uh, where I left off in part one is that I had um, basically got uh, an equation that's of the form of a quadratic formula for the final speed of cart number two. So this final speed of cart number two is analogous to x in the quadratic formula. So the next step is to take um, well, for simplicity, the next step is really to take some numbers that I have up here and plug them in for A, B, and C um, because the solution to a quadratic formula is that um, x is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac uh, over 2a. Um, so we need to get numbers for a, b, and c in this quadratic formula. And um, basically you do that by plugging in the numbers that are given. So mass 2 is 2 kilograms, mass 1 was 1 1.5 kilogram. Uh, I found the momentum before as 5.75 uh, uh, kilogram meters per second. Uh, I found the energy before as 5.23 uh, joules. And I found, uh, and that's everything that's in this equation. So we can plug numbers in to get A, B, and C. And what I end up getting is that um, the A term is equal to 4.23. 667 kilograms. Uh, B is equal to uh, 15.4 uh, uh, kilogram meters per second. So uh, C, uh, oh, excuse me, B has a negative value. I should add, so it's negative 15.4. And then parts uh, uh, coefficient c, which is this guy right here, has a value of 11.76 joules. Um, and, and these are, in fact, the, the units that you end up with for each of these. Um, a has mass squared over mass, which is going to give you mass, that's kilograms, plus mass, that's kilograms. Um, B is 2 times momentum times mass divided by mass, so you should end up with units of momentum, so that's good. C is momentum squared over mass, which is units of energy, uh, minus 2 times energy, so that should be units of energy, joules, so that's good. Um, so now that I have all of those things, I need to plug them into the quadratic formula. And I'm going to end up getting two different solutions for x, where x is actually a stand-in for uh, v2f. So what I'm really solving this quadratic for is the final speed of um, this cart. And um, there's uh, going to be two answers that I get out of this, and this is a, a place where you can do a <clears throat> quick double check of whether we've done stuff right so far, because the two answers that I should get out are basically the actual final speed of cart number two, which is presumably going to be slower than the final speed of cart number one, so that's one of the answers. The other one should actually be whatever the initial speed of cart number two is. So if one of the two numbers that I get out of this is the initial speed of cart two, which was 2.1 uh, 
meters per second. If I get that out of this quadratic, then um, probably I've done everything right up for this step. So that's a, a good double check for those of you who are trying to work one of these on your own. So as it turns out, when I plug the numbers in for each of these guys, I end up getting um, that V2 is equal to, uh, if I use negative B uh, plus the square root, uh, negative B would be positive 15.4. Uh, and that plus all this stuff ends up, and then divided by 2 times a, ends up giving me a value of um, actually of 2.10 meters per second. And then if I plug in negative b and I choose to do minus the square root, that's going to be 15.4 minus you know, the square root of all this stuff. Uh, which gives me um, a value of about 1.2 meters per second. So this first one, of course, is the same as the initial speed. So, so far, so good. And the second one, therefore, must be the final speed. Um, so V2F is 1.20 meters per second. So um, now that I have that, I can go back to the equation that I had found before for V1F in terms of V2F. And basically, I need to plug in the momentum that I would found before, 5.775 kilogram uh, meters per second, subtract from that the momentum of cart number two, which is V2F times M2, so the final momentum of cart number two. And this thing right here would give me the final momentum of cart number one. So then divide that number by the mass of cart number one, and I got the speed for cart number one. And when I plug all these numbers in, I end up getting uh, V1F is equal to uh, 5.775 kilogram uh, meters per second minus, um, so M2 is 2 kilograms. So minus 2.00 kilograms times the speed that we just found for the final speed of cart number two, so times 1.20 meters per second. And then all of that divided by mass of cart number one, which is 1.50 kilograms. So plug all of that into your calculator, and what you end up with is that the final speed is approximately 2.25 meters per second. So V1 final is 2.25 meters per second. And the fact that it's positive means that it is, in fact, going in the same direction that it was originally going in. Did over this one. So that's good news. Um, because we would expect for this cart to speed up if it was crashed into from behind by this cart uh, here without there being any braking force, any, any like brakes slowing it down. So um, at this point, I've solved for both um, the final speeds of cart two and cart one. And um, so I'm basically done, uh, but there's one thing you can do to further double check your work and make sure, uh, make extra sure that you've done it right, um, which is to go ahead and calculate what is the final momentum and what is the final kinetic energy of this system and make sure that it's still equal to these two initial values. If you get the same number as you got for the initial values, in both cases, for these two final speeds, then probably you've done everything right. 
So um, our little double check says that um, P final should be M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. So that's going to be equal to 1.5 kilograms times 2.25 meters per second plus 2.00 kilograms times 1.20 meters per second. So plugging all of that into a calculator should yield that the final momentum is 5.7 seven five kilogram meters per second and so this final one was in fact equal to the final one to the initial one that we calculated at the beginning so that's good so yes that's that's check number one uh, check number two is to calculate the number that we get right here for the final kinetic energy and in fact, if you plug in the numbers for these speeds and for these masses, you will get 5.237 joules. And so our double check works out, and that implies that we've done everything correctly in this uh, problem. So that's sort of a tip to use if you are faced with some other uh, elastic collision problem. Um, in the future, maybe you have a head-on collision instead of a rear-ending collision. Uh, maybe you have a collision in which one is initially at rest and the other crashes into it. Uh, maybe you have another one just like this, but with different masses, different speeds. Um, whatever may be the case, it's not a bad idea to do this little double check at the end, um, just to make sure that all of this work is not for nothing. So um, thank you for watching, and I hope that you find this uh, helpful. So um, goodbye for now.